Welcome to this session on testing strategy. In this session, we'd like to discuss a number of topics, including why having a testing strategy is important and some of the basics around testing strategies. To create a testing strategy, we need to understand the overall scenario. That will help us understand which tests to run and what might be needed to implement those tests. At the end, we'll wrap up by discussing where we can learn more about testing strategies. So let's go ahead and get started. Why is having a testing strategy important? Well, what happens if we don't have a testing strategy? Failure to implement quality control standards or a set of tests on our application can cause the bugs and errors that we might miss to be found at any point during development or production. This can cause cost overruns and could sabotage our overall project. If those bugs were found in production by the users, that could actually destroy a brand's credibility. That's why establishing a good testing strategy should be an essential part of every project. With a good testing strategy, not only will the quality of the application be better, but the teams will be able to increase their velocity over time because they'll have the confidence to make both small and large changes to the application and still deliver it with quality. Sometimes testing strategy is also referred to as quality strategy. Creating a testing strategy happens in the initiation phase of a project and is typically done by the tester or the QA coordinator who is trying to actually understand what needs to be tested and why what tests should be done when, and who's actually going to do the tests. To understand these questions properly, we need to understand the scenario from a number of different perspectives. It's important to understand the architecture of the application and how the application is built. From the user interfaces, to the business logic, to the integrations, it's important to understand which areas present the most risk and are therefore the most important to test. For example, if the application is highly dependent on a particular module, then that module should have a higher priority in terms of testing because that's where most of the risk will probably be. Here, we can see the modules displayed on the four-layer canvas. It helps to have a good understanding of the four-layer canvas and use it to build our architecture. Using the four-layer canvas makes it easier to visualize the modules of the application and design the tests for those modules. For example, when applying the principles of the four-layer canvas, the core business logic is separated from the user interface. This makes it easier to implement the unit testing on the core business modules. Also important is understanding if there are any integrations to external systems that are relevant to the core business module. Those should also have a higher priority in testing. So the four-layer canvas not only helps us understand the architecture, but it can also help us with testing. As we've seen, to understand the overall scenario, it's important to understand the application's architecture. But it's also important to understand the nature of the application and its intended audience. If our application is a mobile business-to-consumer app or business-to-enterprise app with a bring-your-own-device policy, there can be a wide range of devices that we need to test. It would be helpful to narrow that list using market research or a known subset of the devices. That can help us decide whether we need to buy those devices or rent and use a device farm. If the mobile app is an internal business to enterprise app, it may only be necessary to test on a couple of devices. And if we're testing a web app, then testing on different form factors like desktops, tablets, and mobile devices can be important. Once we understand the scenario and the application better, then we can decide which tests we need to run. While developing the application, some tests will be done in the iterations and some tests will be done in the release stage. The testing work is also divided between several roles in the team. The developers can implement the unit tests, the tech leads can do the end-to-end -end testing, the testers can coordinate the user acceptance testing in the iterations, 
and then the testers can also do load testing and device testing in the release stage. So here we can see that there are tests that are more specific to the iterations, and these are typically the functional tests. And then there are tests that are more specific to the release stage, and these tend to be non-functional tests. Once we know which tests we're going to run, we also have to figure out what will be needed to run those tests. To complete the testing strategy, we need to anticipate and provision what will be needed. In this way, the testing strategy becomes more of a test planning exercise. We're going to need things like a dedicated environment for testing. So it's important to have an OutSystems environment that has specific users and testing data so that we don't interfere with the development or the production environment. By having that dedicated environment to testing, we'll also need to define the application lifecycle and the operational processes around that testing environment so the team is aware of what we're going to be doing. It's important to have real data to test the application. This will make the tests more realistic and more likely to capture any real-world problems we run into. We'll also need devices for testing or a test farm. We need to see which of those will be more costly and potentially more time effective. We'll need people to help us with the different types of testing that need to be done. Things like acceptance testing, device testing, field testing. There will also be people who know our existing testing tools very well and they can help us integrate those testing tools without systems and help us perform the tests using those tools. In this session, we've talked about a number of topics around testing strategy, from why we need a testing strategy to the importance of understanding the scenario we're trying to test so that we can decide which tests to run and what we'll need to be able to do those tests. Here we've provided some links to some other resources that may help you learn even more about testing strategy. So that's it for this session on testing strategy. Thanks for listening and have a great day.